ऑडियंस वेलकम टू व्यू पॉइंट फ्रॉम ओवरसीज ऑन योर होस्ट फराज दरवेश वी हैव सेवरल डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स विद अस ऑन द टेबल फर्स्ट वी विल डिस्कस एन अनफॉर्चूनेट इंसिडेंट दैट हैपन इन बलूचिस्तान पाकिस्तान टू बी स्पेसिफिक इट हैपन इन मस्तूंग ए सिटी इन बलूचिस्तान अबाउट 27 पीपल वर किल्ड इन ए सुसाइड अटैक दैट हैपन एंड लुक्स लाइक द इंटेंशन वर टू किल द जेयूआई द जमीयत ए उलमा इस्लाम Uh, a right wing uh, religious uh, political party leader abdul ghafur hadri that was looks like the intention to kill him uh, about 27 people died uh, got killed in this attack and uh, amran abdul ghafur hadri is uh, is is safe uh, and then we have yet to see who who is behind this attack but looks like is being claimed by different factions of taliban and then uh, after uh, you know discussing the the all these terror activities happening in pakistan we'll shift gear and then discuss the uh, james comey uh, the director of cia uh, sorry the director of fbi who has been fired or has been terminated by uh, president donald trump uh, we'll discuss uh, what was what were the reason behind his termination uh, and then we will discuss india has taken the case of kulbushan yadav uh, a a raw or That, that Pakistan alleged that this is he is a raw agent and he has been sentenced to death in Pakistan. So India has taken this to International Court of Justice. We will discuss, you know, what is the what could be the outcome of this and what what role will this story play between the uh, you know the relationship of of India and Pakistan. Riaz, uh, we have with with us Riaz Haq and then Ms. Bazam. Riaz, tell me how do you see this attack that just took place uh, in mastoom balochistan and looks like intentions were to kill molana mm-hmm. abdul ghafur hadri a leader of uh, jui jamiyat ul ulama pakistan a religious mm-hmm. political islam. party jamiyat ul ulama islam jamiyat ul ulama islam a religious political party yes yeah i think so clearly it's a very tragic event uh, a number of people have been killed in this attack uh, and it again raises questions about how much control uh does the pakistani military have uh, in balochistan and whether or not they can prevent these attacks but i think the we know uh, we've known this for a long time that the radicals the uh, whether it's the taliban or jamiyat ul ahrar or whatever you call them al ashkar e jangi they don't believe in the political process they don't believe in democracy they don't believe in elections and uh, they have been targeting all of the parties with the right or left or whoever who participate in the political process because they think that this political process itself right. uh, is anti-islamic is un-islamic so in the in the prior instances there have been several attacks on uh, the leader of uh, JUI the top leader Maulana Fazlur Rahman he has been targeted right. uh, and he has survived several attacks on him and uh, we know that prior to that uh, the Jamaat Islami chief uh, Right. Uh, Ali Hussein Ahmed was also he was also there. So now yeah. but what it is important to note that all these parties were known as pro Taliban parties. I mean JUI Jamiyat ul Islam Jamaat Islami their leaders have been attacked and the responsibility being claimed by Taliban but all these parties were pretty pro Taliban they were su- supporting uh, any it's you know negotiation with Taliban they opposed any military operation against Taliban so it is kind of you know i when i look at it these guys are supposed to be taliban sympathizers yeah so i think what they do is they try to straddle the divide you know they want to be friends obviously with the political process with the other parties in pakistan at the same time they want to represent the interests of the of the right and the far right and apparently that's not good enough for them because these organizations are too radical to accept any kind of a compromise in right. terms of political process so is it not fair to conclude that you know you can't have any negotiation with these people it's it's pretty obvious it's been obvious for a long time uh, that mm-hmm. but i think the the problem that these parties have is some of their base agrees with that extreme interpretation the base of of these uh, parties religious parties like jamaat e islam right. jamaat e right. islam so they they right. do it to try and placate the wrong right to appease their constituents exactly right exactly miss baron <coughs> yeah and that is very true <coughs> that uh, even uh, see the like uh, jamiyat ul ulama islam is the biggest religious party who which is in the parliament and uh, right. in the political system and uh, sometime and always like we are say always they are kind of supportive to these uh, to taliban and right, uh, right, this thing right. recently is um, not quite recently, and they are very anti west 
they are anti-West, uh, right. of course. But, but you know, let's not talk about that because that is kind of given that you right. know, the supporter of Taliban. Actually, like neither people. side trusts them. The problem. That's, the that's problem true. That, that's true. That the, the people who are on the left think that these guys are representative yeah. of Taliban. The right. Taliban, on the other hand, yeah. thinks that these guys are not being honest yeah. with us. So. Yeah, and, and there is a, there is a myth. Nobody knows that it is true or not that Maulana Fazlur Rahman once uh, told the U.S. ambassador probably. Mr. Munter or somebody that you guys tried for so long time the clean shaved people now try the people like me with a beard and mustache. Oh yeah, no, I mean the Musharraf yeah. has revealed that Maulana Fazlur Rahman, who has been a supporter of Taliban, yeah. went to Parvez Musharraf and requested him to allow him to become a Prime Minister of Pakistan. Yes, so, yes, yes. He will be During, very soft. After 2000, and he, he, he tried to convince yeah. Parvez Musharraf yeah. that I will be very soft on America and West. Yeah, and besides, uh, yeah. some So I think that that's the problem yeah. that neither side trusts them. That's right. true. Some time ago, Maulana Fazlur Rahman, he gave this statement and he told these Talibans that this taking the gun and killing people, this concept is obsolete now. Why don't you come join us, our party, and then become part of political yeah, system. Yeah, right. become part of political system. And uh, uh, I personally believe that there something like that could be the reason that uh, Fazlur Rahman's party was attacked. Especially... Uh, so then, uh, then there could be working. Why were you then against Ahsanullah Ahsan's interview? No, right? Ahsanullah Ahsan is a terrorist. Come on. Why not? I mean, if you want those guys to break no, with no, I don't Taliban no, and then no, join no, the no, political no. system. No, no. See, the Taliban versus the terrorists. I mean, the thing is that, that there but are a lot of people... DDP? No, no. There are a lot of people in Taliban. Last week, okay, okay, you are supporters of Last that. week's show, uh -huh. You were totally against Asanullah Hassan's interview. No, I am still. Okay, now let me let me tell you. Uh, Asanullah Hassan is claiming that I have broken away from TTP, Tariq Taliban, Pakistan, a known terrorist group which, which carried out multiple attacks in Pakistan, killed thousands of people, including the the uh, kids of Army Public School. You were saying that we should try him and we should you know bring him to the court of justice and punish him to the worst punishment possible. And you are not supportive of you know him giving an interview on 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 TV. And I still say that he killed. But people. his rationale is now I have who cares? I have got it I on the killed, right path. I killed, I killed, I killed so on many Sirat people. Mustaqim. I killed so many people, and I come to you after I get weaker. I come to you and I say that okay, fine. I am uh, kind of so, telling that I was but, wrong before. So you're saying you're saying, no. Okay. 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 Uh, Please do not give any credit, at least in front of. No, 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 no. no. Is not a is not a is not a yes, that's true. So, do, do you what? want people to break away from TTP groups? See, okay, now you are putting words in my mouth. Okay, you are saying that I I want something. I am saying, Fazlur Rahman gave an statement. Okay. This statement, which could be the cause of no. attack on him. That's what only I said. Okay, I did not say it. it is very good. It is very nice, and he should be doing that. And they should. And second thing is that there are a lot of people who are not terrorists, but they are supportive of these people. I mean, these kind of Taliban factions. They are. Like that. Yeah, that's true. They could uh, get into the system, you know. So, okay. uh, so, but, uh, but, but, I personally believe, as Riaz says, that it is now very clear that you cannot do anything with these. You mean you cannot they negotiate? Or hardened? Yeah, that's true. They cannot live without fighting wars and it's a war but economy. But what do you do with the, with the sympathizers? Sympathizers, see. Okay. They are very vulnerable. They could become next Taliban. Yeah, see that's a problem. So if you, if you clearly see, like uh, General, uh, General Amjad Shoei uh, uh, on TV today was saying, very nice thing he was saying. He said that first of all we have to accept and agree and find out that A, these people are among us who are these terrorists and b who are these people who are among us that who are supporting them mm -hmm. and once we do the crackdown on them then uh, this problem will be uh, kind of a sewage right you so know, what you are saying basically what he's saying and i've always promoted that we have to bring clarity to the table that these true. people yeah. belong to Pakistan. Yeah. They could be used by raw yeah. Musaz. See, whoever. General Musharraf. Okay. General what, what, what Musharraf. What I am saying, yeah. these people are within yeah. the, the ideology, and the people are within Pakistan. Yeah. yeah, General Musharraf wrote very good thing in his book. If you read it, he talked about in the, the corruption fire. in the line of fire. He said about the corruption. He said, and I think that pretty much goes for terrorism also. He said that. Most of the people, uh, there is a big part of the people, they are neither corrupt nor good. 
Ten percent people are very corrupt. Do whatever they have to do corruption. Other ten percent do whatever they will never do corruption. Whatever, mm -hmm. right? So who are in power? Who are more famous those days? Kind of uh, make other eighty percent people to move that direction. So if you somehow control those big corrupt people, mm. confine them, then those eighty percent will not follow that. You know, eighty percent will go to the. Oh, that's what Ramana says work, too. This was maybe he said, but I I did not mm. hear, hear him saying that. But I read it in Muchero's book. I, I like this, uh, and he's right about it. Probably the basically what he's saying you goes you, for you, terrorism. You, you remove corruption at the high level. That's true. Right. Yeah, that's true. Remove corruption, control the corruption yeah. high level, and then it will have a trickle down impact. A trickle down impact, impact and, and, the people, and lot of people just people do. People at the SHO or ESA level, yeah, you know, they will not do corruption. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you did not grow up in Pakistan, Riaz and I. Did. I grew up oh, in you do. Okay, so Riaz and I were spent very long lives over there. Yeah. And that happens that people just do corruption for the sake of corruption okay. because so there is no other way to do it. Any, any, anything else, uh, Riaz, you want to highlight on this unfortunate incident that took place? I think uh, at some point, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but at some point, there will have to be a political process to resolve the problem of terrorism in Pakistan. You're going to have to bring many of these people into the mainstream to end uh, this uh, this terror, this reign of terror. An example of this, a recent example, is what they did in Colombia. There is an organization called FARC. It's a, a revolutionary front. There are extreme left-wing guerrillas. Uh, they have killed. 250,000 Colombians in the last decade to a couple of decades. Now, these people are being given amnesty under a new deal that they have made as a part of bringing them out from that uh, business of terror and drugs and other things that they've been involved in to try and bring some sense of normalcy. Okay. Now, as this process un 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 unfolded, there was a lot of opposition. A lot of Colombians were very angry. We shouldn't talk to these people. We shouldn't do any peace process with them. We should kill these people. We should punish these people. But in the end, some sense prevailed. They said, no, we have to talk to them. We have to bring them out right. uh, uh, to, right. to, to civilization, to reality, in order to put an end to this continuing reign of terror that they okay. have suffered. So now, hasn't it already started in Pakistan? By you know, Asanur is a prime example. Well, that's it's too early to say whether yeah. that's the example, because yeah. what happens is usually the splinter groups are the first to come out. They come out like in FARC that happened. There were certain groups and within FARC that started to turn and start talk to the government. <clears throat> So I think we should keep that possibility open that, that we should be able to make some peace oh. with maybe the splinter groups first before right. we talk to the mainstream. Because I mean, this last week there was an incident, uh, you know, uh, Noreen Lagari was found in Lahore, right, right and which was very important. She now gave out an interview how she was radicalized right. through social media. Right. And then she went to mm -hmm. join. So this is not ending. I mean, right. for, for now, I think mm -hmm. there is that's somewhat under control. Right. Because of the military operation, but this is not going to end as a, b b b because of the military operation. Okay. People's hearts and minds have to be changed over time, and that's what's going to be necessary. Okay. Uh, do you think we are going in the right direction? I hope so. I don't know. It's hard. To see, when these things are happening, it's hard to tell if this is right or not. No, but, the, but I think the, the direction the, is that first you need to bring down the level of violence, and then you start talking. Okay. Ms. Ba, do you think we are going in the right direction at this point? I, I, I would stay with um, uh, Riaz's comment. It's too early to I say I don't that. know. It's too early to say that. You know? right. I mean, that uh, only time will tell we are going to the right direction. Okay. Or not. Uh, I'm going to shift gears and then let's discuss the recent uh, termination of uh, FBI Director uh, James Comey. And Riaz, I would like to start with you. What do you think has got in wrong here? Uh, why was he uh, terminated? I think there's a basic uh, uh, concern that the reason 
uh, that President Trump and his advisors gave early on for termination that he mishandled the Hillary Clinton email investigation, that that is not the real reason. And in fact, uh, in an interview that uh, President uh, Trump gave to NBC News, Lester Holt of NBC News, it came out. Mm -hmm. He said, I had decided I'm going to get rid of him. He was a showboat, uh, he was a grandstander. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he also talked about, well, you know, he did not, he was not investigating me. So it seems that what is uppermost in President Trump's mind is a concern that he himself might be under investigation. The reason he keeps saying it is an indication that he is concerned, he is worried, sure. and that may have motivated him to get rid uh, of, of James Comey. Okay. So th that is where people are right now. Uh, and this raises serious questions, you know, about the independence right, right, of right. Uh, law enforcement agencies, the independence of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. career officials. Right. In, there's a principle in the United States that, that these bureaucrats, these uh, positions, even though they're appointed by the politicians, that they have they don't necessarily owe loyalty to the politicians who appoint them, okay. but their loyalty is to the Constitution and mm -hmm. the laws of the United States. Right. So when somebody like that is fired trying to do their job, right. that raises some serious questions about the motives of, of the person who fired them. What do you think are the motives? As I said, the motive seems to be to try and derail uh, the uh, Russia investigation, uh, the uh, the, uh, the the, the investigation into Trump campaign's collusion right. and uh, what, what, what <coughs> Russians. And from now, this point onwards, what would be the implication on the president's office? Yeah, so there's a lot of questions uh, coming up. One of the things, my expectation is that at the end of the day, the FBI and these agencies are too independent to cave into the president. Okay. That whoever they bring in mm -hmm. is going to be, first of all, the professional FBI agents, people who've been working there for a long time, You're right. they will continue to investigate. They will not be intimidated. They will not be cowed down uh, by this action. And whoever they bring in right. will have to go through you know, a vetting process. And they, anybody that there is suspicion might be favorable to Trump right. is probably not going to get confirmed. So I'm still hopeful that this action by the president will not derail, they may delay this investigation right. somewhat because of change of personnel. However, it will not derail this, it will continue, and they will find out, they will get to the bottom of right. whether or not the Trump campaign colluded with the Russians. Ms. Yeah, and uh, the most interesting part is that, that uh, the White House, uh, their uh, spokesperson, uh, Sarah Huckabee, she says one thing, Mr. President said different thing. She says that by firing him, this uh, they are going to hasten the uh, investigation. Uh, President Trump last night said that actually it will slow down. Then slow down, what? Uh, slow down this uh, process. Uh, he agreed mm -hmm. he on. He actually the says that this investigation is a hoax anyway. Well, anyway, that's true. Yeah, well, he yeah, doesn't even take it seriously. He doesn't take it know, serious. It doesn't bother him, right? right. That's insignificant. Oh, I think he takes it pretty seriously. Yeah. He's, he's letting you on. Well, this is how he has to do it. Actually, actually, in order to feel politically correct, yeah. he has to do this, right? Yeah, that's true. So, no, but that's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. I think as a president, he should not be saying that this is all a hoax, there's nothing to it. That's true. I think he should say that let's. He should want to clear That's his correct. campaign, yeah. his own name. Yeah. He should so not, just he should not interfere. Yes. He should let the process That's go. Let the process right. go on. And the similar thing we used to talk about but, you know, Prime Minister you Nawaz know. Sharif also, that you know, why don't you just go and let it finish it? So that's what the, the same but argument is going President to say. Trump. You don't expect this from President Trump. No, I expect the President of United States, not Mr. Trump. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that should be the attitude well, of the President of United States. Okay. That uh, now there is uh, CNN and <laughs> the New York Times. They claim that right. their sources told them. Uh, Jack Tepper say that personally that source told him that uh, Comey uh, was called uh, was invited at a dinner in White House. And he was asked if he would be loyal to uh, Mr. Trump. And Comey's response was, sir, 
I will be honest, but I will not be loyal. I mean, this is my job does not allow me to be a loyal to any individual. Mm -hmm. And that was one reason that um, uh, Mr. President was not very happy with him, you know. And you can see that uh, one thing White House say, President Trump says other thing, you know. In the morning, uh, Sarah Huckabee say that, no, this is uh, not President Trump's idea. Just 10 minutes later, Vice President say it is uh, Mr. President's idea, which he say on mm. Thursday also. So, uh, you know, I mean, I would not compare it with the Saturday Night Massacre of 1973, October 1973, when President Nixon fired the Attorney General and then fired the um, Deputy Attorney General. But uh, because his situation is a little different uh, from there, because that time he was under big pressure and all that, but Mr. Trump is not. All House is his, Senate is his. But still, uh, things are, uh, it is kind of uh, 21st century's um, uh, midnight massacre, I would, I would consider. Well, and it can <clears throat> take things in a very negative direction, okay. which it seems falling now very fast. No, what do you think will happen from this point onwards? See, this point onwards, see, first of all, uh, the Republican Party, you know, like, uh, there was, politics is different now, first of all, you know. Like those days, the Republicans, in the 70s, Republicans, when they found out that uh, President is not telling President the truth, Nixon. Nixon not telling the truth, they all uh, started moving away from him. Now, there are a lot of vested interests uh, around there. So now politics is not there. However, when they will start getting worried about it. Now media start asking mm -hmm. this question mm -hmm. that uh, is it, if there is a Democrat president, did these legislatures behave in the same way by keeping quiet or don't they have allegiances with the same constitution? Which is uh, which? Uh, which had uh, which uh, Mr. Comey uh, had allegiances mm -hmm. with? So you know these things are are getting dangerous, and they right, will be right. under pressure. They have to say that, and uh, I do not think that it is very simple for uh, President Trump to come out. Pe people don't trust him anymore. People, uh, it, there are so many hot airs, uh, so many smoke screens were created from January 20th to this day in a lot of different right. ways <clears throat> that people have no trust in them. Mm -hmm. And it is very bad for the administration. So let's see that to what extent this thing can go and to what extent this investigation right. comes okay. out and uh, how things work. Riaz, would you like to add anything to this? Uh, yeah, I think uh, at this point, I think <clears throat> the impeachment of President Trump is a distinct possibility. But it's not going to happen as long as Republicans hold both the House and the Senate majorities. Okay. Because they will not want to impeach their own party's president. Mm -hmm. However, there is election coming up in 2018, this in November 2018. If Democrats win, both the House and the Senate, which is a possibility. A very solid possibility. Because of uh, the fact that Trump administration is not doing well, that there is a lot of anger. And traditionally, even, you know, even when presidents are doing okay, they have lost something like 20 to 25 seats, the, the okay. ruling party. I mean, they both hold both the House and the Senate as well as the presidency. The party that's in power loses anywhere from 20 to 25 seats yeah. no, in normal yeah. relations. Right. But this could be a worse than 20 to 25. It could lose a lot more seats right. simply because a lot of people are, are going to be very unhappy. The pre right. President Trump right now is running well below 50% in terms of popularity. But do you, and do it you could get even this? worse in the next two years. Well, it worked in Europe. Okay. Right? So, 20, yeah, in 20 fact, points. I mean, right. he, in fact, I would points. say that one of the reasons yeah. why the Europeans did not vote for the white nationalists like Trump, people that are like Trump, is because they're seeing what, what's happening in the United States. It scared them away. Why do you think so? 
Uh, well, uh, um, uh, you're talking about the European... Euro uh, French, French, French elections, yeah, the, the Dutch elections. Yeah. So See, they're seeing how bad things are going. Well, Dutch election, the margin was low, but in French election, margin is... is I, I think uh, I right. see it from different way. I mean, I see it as a, uh, as a anti-establishment support. Mr. Um, uh, uh, Macron was anti-establishment. Okay. So that okay. helped him a lot, and okay. I think that uh, wave okay. of anti-establishment right. is... In order to, in the interest of time, let me just, uh, let's take a small break. So, Ms. Ma, let's, uh, you know, search here, let me change the topic. So, India has taken the uh, Kulbushan Yadav case to International Court of Justice. Uh, what do you think are the implications of this? Because Kulbushan Yadav has been sentenced to death in Pakistan uh, as, a, as an Indian spy and as someone who has uh, funded, supported and been involved in terrorist activities in Pakistan. How do you see this? Well, uh, see there are a couple of things. See, uh, when Pakistani naval plane was shot down and Pakistan took this case to ICJ, India decided not to participate and they say that there is some kind of uh, agreement with the Commonwealth countries that they don't go uh, against each other and, and Pakistan lost that case by 16 to 2, you know, that time. Okay, now it is interesting that India went there. Although India is the one who is uh, the supporter of bilateralism and all that, you know where they go. Okay, that is one thing. Uh, the problem is that, okay, Pakistan also, today, Pakistan also say that they don't, uh, they don't accept the jurisdiction of ICJ on uh, this, this issue. Uh, number three is that, that if, if uh, they, if, if judge is judges over the suppose it goes there and if judges take the issue of the human right on that then probably Pakistani case will be weakened. Limit. Now okay. the question is suppose Pakistan loses it what will happen they have to release it now they may not be they may have to pull back from the death sentence on that okay. or they may have given some access of the diplomatic uh, you know some diplomatic yes. access to the yeah. it, there is a, there is one senior right. lawyer was saying that uh, pakistan should have given them some kind of diplomatic access to them and if they would have done that then india had no case whatsoever Mm. So we have yet to see. However, today's news is that Pakistan decided to go against uh, to challenge the jurisdiction of ICJ on this issue. Riaz, yeah, I think uh, it's been interesting. Everybody wants to hear from you on this case. By the, the, the news, news friends, especially the news first came out that the ICJ has stayed the execution. No, that was wrong. And it turned out that it's totally false. This is what Indian media. Mm -hmm said and the Indian officials said this as well which was absolutely false mm. the, if you look at the order it says nothing about staying the execution the second thing I believe is that I think India has made a big mistake by going to the International so? Court of Justice first it creates this issue for them where they talk about bilateralism that we should resolve our issues bilaterally not internationalize it so it goes on to an into an international forum. The second thing is that Pakistan should use this opportunity, can and should use this opportunity to highlight India's use of proxies mm. in attacking Pakistan and in killing Pakistanis and in using terrorism as a tool, as an instrument of policy against Pakistan. So I think it gives, Pakistan should take this seriously, should use this opportunity to highlight what Indians have been doing in Pakistan and 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 then and tell the world uh, that how Pakistan has suffered as a result of it. We're talking about one man's life. Uh, t tens of thousands of Pakistanis have lost their lives because of the actions uh, of of Indian agents in Pakistan. So, how what is the political impact of this? I mean, definitely the the, the negotiation between India and Pakistan will be jeopardized because of this. The Bush negotiations. Oh, there, there there are no negotiations. What negotiations are you talking about? Oh, okay. There have been no negotiations for a long time. I mean, they basically keep yeah. making demands that, hey, you know, do this or else we're not going to talk to you. Right. This has been the situation. Yeah. So, so, you don't, so you don't foresee any negotiation or any any new good developments happening? Unless they change their mind. The Indians decided to cut off 
talks. Unless they change their mind and they come back and don't want to talk to us. I don't think Pakistan is going to talk. Never say never. I mean, the thing is that, that things do change time to time. I mean, you never know that uh, international relations have no personal issues sure. going on. Maybe there are. So Modi Saab could decide that, to, you know, take, but, a, take but a bus to Pakistan. But as they are saying that it is more India which has to do it than Pakistan has to do it. But I would always say it could happen. And it nothing to right. do with ICJ case going on, that if it goes to ICJ, okay, we were one step back also. Okay. This is all politics. And uh, I agree with Riaz that uh, if Pakistan would start is, uh, raising those issues, mm -hmm. then uh, there will, India will raise other issues and it will mm -hmm. be a Pandora box okay. will open. But it's not gonna, if right. they decide to talk with Pakistan, they will. Okay, uh, okay Riaz, thank you so much, Mizra, thank you so much. Audience, thank you for watching Viewpoint from Overseas. Uh, we'll be back next week with more topics. Goodbye.